Understanding the problem is the first stage in system development. What we're going to look at in this video is the stages in understanding the problem of clarifying specifications, performance requirements, identifications of inputs, processes and outputs of the actual system. So to start off with, we need to know what's actually involved in this stage and essentially what we've got to do is know what the actual issue or why in fact we are looking at creating a new system. Okay. It involves clarifying the specifications, performance requirements, identification of the inputs and required outputs, determining the steps that when carried out will solve the problem, okay, and the use of input process output diagrams, IPO diagrams. These specific diagrams we will not look at in this video, we're going to save them for a later video due to the fact they require a bit of detail. Now, the first stage is clarification of the specifications. Basically, what we're doing here is having the development team interpret what are the specific needs of the system. This is achieved through the team analyzing a design brief or statement from a client and then highlighting the key features that will be used to determine these performance requirements. So, the performance requirements then are used to understand the actual what is going on. What are the requirements of this system? It's used in order to identify the elements of the proposed system that need to be factored into the new system when it is created. These elements may be recorded in point form and then referenced through the project development cycle, specifically at the end of the cycle at the evaluation stage in order to ensure all initial performance requirements have been met by the system. So let's take a look at how this might be achieved. So what we have here is a specification for a system, a basic calculator. This program is going to be developed to allow the user to enter two different numbers. The software is either to add, subtract, multiply or divide the numbers at the user's discretion. The software is then to display the result of the calculation on screen. So we're going to now determine what are the requirements of this system based on this blurb here. So the performance requirements are, we've got to have the user enter two different numbers. Okay, the next thing is, they have to be able to add, subtract, multiply or divide at their discretion. So that would be the next actual requirement of this system. And then finally, the calculation has to appear on screen. So they would be our three performance requirements in this actual uh, piece of software. Okay, so we've looked and tried to clarify the specification of the system and we've established three requirements here. Okay, so that gives us an overview of a target for our system. Next, we're going to be looking at the identification of inputs and outputs. What we need to understand is an input is data that is entered into the system. It is predominantly from a user, but sometimes in the case of large systems, it can come from other software as well. An output, on the other hand, is data after it has been processed, which essentially makes it classified as information, which is the end result of the actual software. So it's what we essentially are creating the software for. At this stage of software development, we are basically outlining, in order to achieve a desired outcome, output, what data needs to be entered into the system input initially in order to be processed and achieve that desired output. So here once again is that same example. Okay, but let's look at it from an input and output perspective now. So our inputs would be, okay, basically the user is entering two different numbers. That would be an input. The other thing the user is designing is basically what calculation to do, add, subtract, multiply or divide. So that would be an input as well. Our output is obviously the calculation itself, the actual result. So we want to put in two numbers, we want to say what actual calculation is going to be and then the software is going to give back to us as an output the result of the calculation. The final stage now is determining, basically now that we know our inputs and our outputs, what is the actual processes in the middle that's going to turn this input into the output? Okay, the processes may involve a number of steps as well as sub-programs sub in order to deliver the required output. So, in the case of the previously mentioned scenario, the steps may involve okay, assigning a variable for number one, assigning a variable for number two, selecting a case for calculation, add, subtract, multiply or divide, calculating number one and number two, and then display the calculation as a result. So 
basically this gives you a holistic understanding of how we actually initially understand our problem and then start developing an idea of how we can turn this into software. Essentially, we've got to find out firstly what our requirements of the system are. What essentially does the system need to do? Next, knowing what inputs are going to go into the system and what output we want coming out of the system as a result. And then once we know those two things, developing the actual processes, the actual steps that will turn that input into the output, which essentially be the coding within our program. So I think this gives you a good understanding of the understanding the problem stage.